Unfortunately, you can't go to Rockhampton without jumping on a ball. This week, I'm heading to Cowboy Country to see the best fishing Central Queensland could offer. Suck him in, mate. Sucking it in. But before I hit the water, the locals put on a welcome my ribs will never forget. And up. Yep. I discover the hard way there's a reason fishermen don't ride bulls. You all right, bud? You all right, Al? Well, I think there's either fractures in the back of the ribs. Luckily, my mates feel really sorry for me. If anything, you should be taking points off because it's your own stupid fault. Oh, yeah. Despite the overwhelming odds... Well, that's all I'm good for is taking photos. This wounded cowboy is determined to come out on top. And that's no bull. He's got a double No trigger. friggin' way. I actually did this partially to give you guys a chance. Woohoo! Fishing is my life. It's in my DNA. From above the water and below the surface. It's who I am. Oh, yeah! Oh. Join me as I travel the world in search of the most insane fishing experiences on the planet. Oh, you got oh, no. Uh -oh. This is not good! A croc out of nowhere comes in, smashes my barra. Oh, yeah! Now, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. How good is that for a Mackie? Look at the size of it. Get in the boat, Alex, and stuck to the boat. I'm Al McGlushin, and this is Fishing with Mate. <laughs> Situated in central Queensland, Rockhampton is the beef capital of Australia. But I hear this region is slowly earning a reputation for some bloody good fishing. As I'm driving into Rockhampton, I'm feeling like a fish out of water. Because there's nothing fishing at all. But I tell you what there is, there's bulls. Lots of big bulls. Even as I drive into the Big Four Caravan Park, there's a bloody great big bull staring at me. This town is dominated by bulls. After a sleepless night in Rocky, it was an early start. I headed down to Gladstone, where the boys from the Complete Angler were waiting to take me fishing. What's going on with this bloke? Oh, he looks a bit damaged, doesn't he? Not moving real good. <laughs> so we see this bloke on TV who's catching marlin and swords and, and all these massive fish, and then... He turns up and he just looks like he's seen better days, a washed up old fisherman. I don't know what was going on. Liam, oh, always hey, a pleasure. What have you done to yourself? Uh, let's just say it's a long story. I'll tell you on the way out. Yeah, right. <laughs> when it comes to fishing, there is no one keener than me. I'll jump out of bed any time in the morning just to go fishing. But today, let's just say it was going to be tough. So, boys, what's the plan today? Mate, we'll head out to the um, to the reef, head out the back of the reef, and we'll throw some stick baits around on the shallows, see if we can't pick up a trout, a couple of GTs or something like that, some mackerel, see what happens. And then uh, if that's a bit quiet, we might even have a drop in the deep for some reds. Oh, beautiful. Nothing that fights too hard, all right? I need easy fish, soft fish today. It's more importantly, what's happening with you, mate? Well, I was really, and it comes down to it, I was a victim of circumstance. So last night, the locals got me to go down to the Great Western Hotel for the full cowboy experience. Rightio. So you put this one on? Yeah. But what I didn't realise, I was part of the entertainment. Suck him in, mate. Sucking it in. <laughs> so as fishermen, you never let the truth get in the way of a good story. There's a massive crowd there, and I'm like, oh, yeah. They're all cheering, they're all chanting, ow, ow, ow. I'm thinking, <laughs> like, I'm a celebrity, this is awesome. You know, and I wrapped up, walked up, popped on this bull and said, mate, I'm in charge here. And that bull, was, he was packing darkies from that moment on. And I've come out the chute. Mate, I lost count how long I was on there for, I tell you. 
So as I'm recounting my bull riding experience, let's just say I elaborated on it substantially. So what's the real story, mate? Well, I, that's, OK, that's how I thought it went. Little does he know, we've seen it on Facebook. We know exactly what went down. I reckon I'm pretty sure the minute I've sat on it, he's just gone, oh, I'm going to kick this muppet off pretty quickly. <laughs> In my life, I've done some crazy stuff. I've jumped in with some massive sharks. I've leaded huge marlin, fought massive tuna. But as I slid down on top of that bull, this brought it to a whole new level. You're all right, just sit there smooth, just relax. If you're relaxed, the bull will be relaxed. Release that rail. Release that one, yep. Now I want you to hold your rope there. So Jaden goes through the instructions, which are really simple. Wrap your hand in. Hold on tight and look at the top of the bull right at his shoulders and lean forward. And at that moment, I've got to say, I haven't been scared of much of my life. I started to rethink the situation. But before I could do anything, they've opened the gate and the bull has bolted out at 100 miles an hour. When you're ready, get that hand up, Al. You right, Al? I think I had, yeah, I could say two seconds. I don't even think I got two seconds. The next thing you know, I'm flying through the air and I just land in a heap on the ground. I couldn't even get up. I'm lying there for a second, totally winded. I can't even get up. They had to help me get up and drag me to the side. He was on the bull for, I reckon, less than a second. He come out. I don't think he'd even got a chance to buck and he was already off the side. It was never going to end well. So then I tried to go to bed, couldn't lie down, and realised that I was in dire straight. So I spent all night in emergency. Here he is, the famous bull rider, Yama How are you feeling, mate? I'm never going bull riding again. Well, they think there's either fractures in the back of the ribs, something down the hips, but they don't think there's any blood in my lungs, so that's, that's apparently good. So after a long night in emergency, I've come out with a few cracked ribs and a very bruised ego. How this is going to play out today, I have no idea. So Al's told me he's got a couple of broken ribs, and I'm thinking, is this trip even going to happen? You know, we're heading out the reef. It's potentially going to be a few waves banging into. We're throwing big poppers and big stick baits. He's in for a world of hurt. I actually did this partially to give you guys a chance. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Yeah. Coming up. This wounded cowboy takes on the local. Pretty bad when I can't even lift my own squid in the boat. Right? <laughs> and you won't believe what I bring up from the bottom. Have a look at that. So what have you done to yourself then? Well, I think I've got a few broken ribs at the back there. I guess it's some severe bruising. Four hours in an emergency bloody department, which was on my quiet night. But it doesn't matter because I'm still going to kick some butt today. Fishing is going to be tough today. Now I'm fishing with experts that know these grounds like the back of their hand. And worse still, this wounded cowboy is nowhere near 100%. Probably closer to 10, to be honest. Get some... Oh, how nice is this? We'll get some gear down, rig up, and um, get ready, eh? Sounds good, mate. After running for a while, we finally hit the reef. And it's a sight to behold. Crystal clear water, beautiful coral, little sandy caves. This place just screamed fish. Chuck one of these on, mate. One of those? Bloody beautiful. That'll get you the fish. The plan for today was to fish the rising tide. Now, what happens is the fish, coral trout, red throat, GTs, all the big predators move up into the shallows with the tide. So what we're doing is we're going to work along the edge of the reef, casting stick baits, poppers, plastics right up into the shallows. So stick baiting for us up here, it's, it's shallow water, and pretty much all you're doing, you're working your lure through that mid-column of the water, and you've got everything from reef species to surface fish will come up and eat it because you're in that strike zone all the time. So, Liam, what are we doing? Competition, right? Most fish? Well, I think we've got to run with... A point per fish, yep. and then target species, two points. All right, what's target species? Trout, GTs, red-throat emperor, spangled emperor, 
Anything good. Anything good's worth two so points. Everything that pulls really hard, two, two points. points. Wow, there's got to be a handicap there for me. I, I think can't... so. I think, if anything, you should be um, taking points off because it's your own stupid fault. <laughs> oh, right, I'll just go and cast over here on my own. Don't you worry. <laughs> I don't need any help. Oh, oh come get, on, get, mate. Get, get oh, up. don't get in the room. Get up. Get up. Are you got trap? No. Little sweet lip species, mate. It's not what we're uh, we're here for, but it's a point on the board. It's a point more than me. That's it. And you've got him right up the shallows, eh? You're lucky to get yeah. him out of there. Real shallow. While I was really struggling to cast, the boys were ticking away, getting a point for point. Oh, oh look at the teeth on that thing. With long toms and little empery things and I couldn't even get a bite. What's that song, that lonesome cowboy? I'd rather be catching my fish two points at a time, not these one-point fish. You want help? Mate, look at that. How good, how good are those squid? The fishing was pretty slow. We're casting hard. We're working for nothing. Then all of a sudden, I get a bump. I look down. What is it? A squid chasing up my lure. It's unreal. There you go, Dan, come and grab him for us. I would kill to be kingy fisher in Sydney with that. It's pretty bad when I can't even lift my own squid in the boat. <laughs> I like to think because it's big. All of a sudden, it's raining squid. All these big northern calamari are swimming right up to the boat. They're eating everything we put in the water. It's the only thing I can actually land at the moment. Yeah, well, that's why when I seen him, I thought, oh, here we go. We might be able to get Al on the board here. It's a charity, mate. That's what it is, a charity. That's it. And you know the west part? It's not a fish, so it doesn't count. I think it'll lead into a fish. A squid. Oh, you got a squid as well, have you? Yeah. Oh. And then on the front, Dan hooks up a squid on his stick bait. Catching a squid on a stick bait? That's rarer than hen's teeth. You know, you just don't hook them. You get a bite, but you'll never hook them. Mate, you're on fire. They don't count. <laughs> just so we're clear. Yeah, we didn't classify them, did we? The best part about the fishing up here is the introduction of the net-free fishing zones, which includes central Queensland's Capricorn Coast. So, Liam, have you seen a big change since the net-free zones have been introduced? Yeah, mate, look, we've started to notice quite a lot. Like, we've, we're only 100 k's down the road from Rocky, so it, it's easy for us to fish, but we're seeing a flow-on effect in Gladstone. Like, I haven't seen the barra bite throughout winter like they did this winter, ever. It's awesome, man. All of that, you fix it up, you get the nets out, more fish for everyone. And you know one thing I've noticed is with regional tourism, fishing is always a key. Like, and if they catch fish, they will come. That's it, mate. It's, um, you know, look at where we are, just outside the net free zones. It's beautiful. This is, this is the sort of place people want to come and see. Absolutely. Now, catch me a fish. Let's do it. Oh, yep. Good work, Dan. And while Liam and I were banging on about how good oh. the fishing is, Dan was up the front, hooked up to a big GT. I just saw the fish up there in the surf break, and as the white water rolled in over it, I sort of lost it, so I put the cast down over there. But I had to give it a fair bit there for a little while. The problem we got was the fish was up in the shallows in amongst the waves. We couldn't drive back out. We had to go along. We had to pull a fish across at the same time, the swell's coming in. Talk about making it hard for ourselves. Bit of a wave there, Brad. Hang on. Brad, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, Dan. Oh. Hang on. Brad, hang on. Hang on. Hang on, Dan. Oh. Yeah. Nah, it's a GT. Ah, oh, it's a Jeep. How good is that sight, fish in the shallows like that? So the technique for catching GTs in shallow water is to go in hard. As soon as you hook up, start moving the boat, get into deeper water, and physically drag that fish out with you. The problem we got was the fish was up in the shallows in amongst the waves. We couldn't drive back out. We had to go along. So we had to pull a fish across. At the same time, the swell's coming in. I have mates that go and catch big GTs, and this is only a little one. You can see why they do it. He's kept the rod high, which helps to keep you out of the snags and the coral. 
And finally, we've got this beautiful big GT to the boat. Bloody good work, mate. Bloody good work. Seeing Dan fight that big GT, I realised there's no chance of me being able to fight one. So when we got the fish on board, guess what my job was? Photographer. And even lifting up the 5D hurt. If you sit back in that corner, that's it. That's it. And just turn that tail. Well, that's all I'm good for is taking photos. The reef looked really enticing. You know, but we were working hard and we weren't seeing a lot of fish. So what do you do as fishermen? You change your tactics. So we headed offshore, started fishing deeper. The technique used for bottom fishing is first, use your sounder, find a bit of rubble and hopefully mark a few fish on it. Might just have a quick drop on this, eh? There's not a massive show, but we'll have a quick look. Then it's a choice of lures or bait. Now, traditionally, everyone likes using bait. So while the guys picked bait, I decided to put a little metal outcast down. That way, we're mixing up and covering our options on two bases. When it comes to jigging, my usual approach is a fast, erratic stop-start and lifting it up through the water column. However, Liam turned around and said, slow it down and keep it on the bottom. Try, try leaving it down there, Al. Just real slow, slow working it. And you know what? Work the treat. There you go, cowboy. Actually worked better when you said to do the jigging softly. Yeah, slow jigging. And while I'm feeling a bit of pain in my back, no, I'm feeling a lot of pain in my back, I knew this was a quality fish. That's the problem going to light gear to make it easier on the... on your ribs. The rest of it, it bloody hurts. The great thing about fishing these reefs is you don't know what it's going to be. It oh, is nice a nice trout. trout. And nice when trout. a solid coral trout yeah, came out, the invalid brings out. Even considering trout, my mate. present state, I was amping. Okay. There we go. Hey, look at the invalid. This is like the big bull. <laughs> That's like the baby potty calf. It's a fish. It's a fish. It's a point. Tough and delicious. One point. Two points. Two points. Two points. Two points. Two points. Two points. You get Two that. Trout. So despite my handicap, I was up there with one trophy fish. Dan was up there with one trophy fish, he's GT. And Liam, he's dragging the chain. And you know what makes it even better? On the next drop, I've hooked up again. And this time, it's even bigger. Might be a bit better this one. That looks like it's hurting. That's hurting. Dead weight on this one. Weird fight. Coming up. No way. The strangest Holy fight. Crap. Delivers an unbelievable result. Don't worry, Brad, it won't hurt a bit. And payback time for my producer. Come on. It's hooked up on something, damn it. So the fish strikes. And it's typical of a coral trout. You know, it's tapping away, then all of a sudden everything changes. Dead weight on this one. Good trout. I was gaining line, I was losing line. The fish felt bigger, but then was swimming up. I thought I was hooked up in the reef at one stage. I just couldn't understand what was going on. Not much weight on it now, it's complaining up. Weird fight. Look at the bubbles oh, you got a, holy. Huh? He's got a double No trigger. friggin' way. That is insane. Have a look at that. That's why I was saying it was fighting weird. They're fighting each other. Oh. Look at that. Holy crap. So I look over the side of the boat, I see colour, and then I realise it's not just a trout, there's a nice coral cod hanging off the other hook. Mate, I can't believe you've been crippled all day, sitting at the front of the boat, not doing much. Can't even cast properly, it's so... And you get out here, I think you might have taken the lead. And I'm catching two good fish. And one jig. And one jig. How could I luckily put two hooks on that one? <laughs> what do you reckon? This guy's on the menu? Have him for dinner and we'll let this little fella go, eh? Bloody eight. So now, getting that double hook up, that's pushed me right up to number one. I'm on three, Dan's on one, and Liam, well, he's dragging the chain still at zero. So you know what? With the day coming to a close, we're going to give him one shot. And if he doesn't produce, we're going home. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, yep. yep. Ooh, that's a proper one. This is it, the closing fish. It's not a great fish, but it'll do. What are you calling it for? Come on. Oh, mate, I was going to either call trout or marry cod. Mmm. 
Or, or coral cod. Ooh, you have come back at the end. Liam's got his trophy fish. Do you know what? His coral cod was definitely bigger than mine. But in the end, well, this wounded cowboy has won the day. It's all for the uh, 60 gram Yakimito jig. Bloody beautiful, mate. Bloody beautiful. Not a big fish, but it's a fish. And it's a quality fish, but you know the best part? Guess he's still got the most quality fish. Huh? Two trout. The cowboy. And one of those? The bull rider. The bull rider. You know why? Because I'm tough. <laughs> <laughs> Anything rougher than this, and I'll start crying, by the way, so just so we're clear on that. We better get out of here then, because it might start blowing soon. We are definitely going. Even though the fishing was pretty slow, it was a great day on the water. Plenty of laughs, beautiful scenery, and it was great to be able to show El my part of the world. Central Queensland has some great fishing opportunities. So do yourself a favour, get up here and fish in and around those net-free zones. When you're ready, get that hand up, El. Hand up. Yep. Oh. You're right. You're right. After embarrassing myself in such a spectacular way, there was only one thing for it. Producer Brad Kane, he was getting on a bull. Because if it's one in, it's all in. Don't worry, Brad, it won't hurt a bit. Yeah, it'll be fine. Right. Yeah, go for it. Side by side, when you watch these two rides, even in slow motion, it's impossible to see what happened. Mm. Although, I reckon Brad, well, he might have had a millisecond more than me, but he was in the air. Neither of us were attached to the ball for very long at all. Seen in the shows, I think he should stick to his fishing career. Oh, straight over the side. Totally win to me. And I had this great idea. I had a steak for dinner and I beat the ball. It backfired big time. <laughs>